A very good morning to all of you and thank you for joining us this morning on the next installment of the series that I'm busy with and I'm busy still speaking on focus on Christ and today I want to speak to you on the demand that there is for us for practical righteousness as we focus on the Lord. Now, through the years, we have come to understand that there is two dimensions, or there are two dimensions to righteousness. We see both positional righteousness as well as practical righteousness. Now, positional righteousness is all about our imputed righteousness we receive at the moment of our regeneration. But when we speak about practical righteousness, it is a bit different. This is all about doing what is right. It is when we as believers actually demonstrate that that righteousness that we've received as imputed righteousness in a very practical manner. You see, it's all about trusting God and acting with discipline, being aligned to the Word of God and what it requires from us. It is all about living in alignment with God's standards. Scripture repeatedly admonishes us to pursue that what is right. If we look at 1 Timothy 6 verse 11, it says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience and meekness. If we look at Ephesians 4 verse, verse 1, we see Paul saying the following. He says, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. In 1 Peter 1 verse 14 and 6 to 16 it says, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he has called you as holy, so be you also holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. If we look at the book of Proverbs, we see that the whole book of Proverbs actually focuses on practical righteousness. In effect, it is a library of real-world things that we should do and things that we should not do. It provides us as believers with instruction on how to be wise, how to be insightful and skillful in life. It is a guide for doing what is right and practicing our position as sons of God in Christ. Let's look at a portion of scripture in Proverbs 11 from verse 4 to verse 6. It says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. There are two kinds of men that are walking this planet that we are calling earth. There is Christ, the new man, and then there is Adam, the old man, the carnal man in us. And we see the picture there of both the beauty and the beast. If we look at 1 Kings 8 verse 23, it says, And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee, in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Again, if we look at another scripture, in Proverbs 15 verse 24, it says, The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. John 8.23 tells us, And he said unto him, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, and I am not of this world. You see, we need to understand that Jesus is from above. 
but we are from the earth. Also, let us look at another scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 47 to 49, that confirms this. It says, the first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. As And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. You see, the literal Greek rendering of verse 49 is actually, it says, let us now put on and wear as a garment or a piece of armor the image of the heavenly. So we need to understand that heaven is from above. Earth is from beneath. Christ is from above. Adam is from beneath. And therefore we need to understand that the fruit of the Spirit is from above. We all know this scripture in Galatians 5, verse 22 to 24, what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. You see, we need to understand that the works of the flesh are from beneath. I say we are speaking about our focus needs to be on Christ. As such, our focus needs to be not in the earth and in the earthly things, but our focus needs to be on heavenly things. Our focus needs to be on the spirit man that God has placed on the inside of us when we were regenerated. Let's look at another scripture in Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And then it lists all these things. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, these things are from the earth. These things are earthly. But the word also tells us that righteousness, peace, and joy are from above. In Romans 14 verse 17, it tells us, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. You see, things such as unrighteousness, war, and sorrow, those are the things that are from beneath. In Proverbs 15 verse 24, the scripture tells us clearly that the way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from the hell beneath. Such things as sexual sins, evil habits, gluttony, drunkenness, gossip, jealousy, envy, strife, peer pressure, the love of money, power struggles, whether it's civil or whether it's amongst pastors and leaders, insecurity, any sense of insignificance or inferiority, things such as unrighteous anger, lawsuits, political correctness, any and all kinds of prejudice, all thoughts of retaliation and revenge, any sort of demonic activity, fear or timidity in any form, all of this is from beneath the realm of death and hell. You see, in Christ, we have been called to focus on Christ. And we've called, been called to live above all of this junk and stuff from this world. As believers, we cannot and we dare not to focus on those lower earthly realms. We cannot speak life from beneath 
because we have learned that you get what you confess and you confess what you are. Therefore, it is so important that we prophesy from the heavenlies, that we speak forth from being seated in Christ in heavenly places, from the place and position of our ascended life, from a more, a position and a place of a more abundant life. In John 10 verse 10, he tells us that the thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that they might have life and they might, they, they might have it more abundantly. You see, if we live from above, if we live from that place of being seated in Christ, from our in Christ position, there is abundance in how we live. You see, as sons of God, our mandate is to bring heaven to earth. In Matthew 6 verse 10, it tells us, Thy kingdom done, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God is not beneath. God is not down there in the lower realms of our whining, our complaining, our self-pity, or our weaknesses. I know this is a tough statement that I'm making, but he's not going to sit there and wallop with you in the mud of the flesh. When you throw your self-pity party, he's not going to sit there. He's not going to join you in your self-pity party, nor will any of his true servants accommodate you in your position and place of wallowing. You see, we need to understand that there's nothing down there in the earthly realm but death and hell. Let me ask you, are you sick and tired of being bound by earthly things? Let me and allow me to emphatically state to you that you have a choice. You can either live from that place in the earthly realm down there in Adam, or you can live up there in Christ. We can live the life of the high calling in Christ. We can know and enjoy the secrets of the ascended life. And I call upon you this morning that you choose wisely. If we look at John 3 verse 31, it says, He that comes from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He that comes from heaven is above all. The ascended one and those who live the ascended life in him are above the cares of this life. You see, living the ascended life, being living this life of being focused on Jesus and being in your in Christ position, you find that stuff is not on top of us. We are on top. As sons of God, we are on top of all this stuff. Jesus knew that all religion that was pictured by the Pharisees of his day was from beneath. If you look at John 8, 23, it says, And he said unto them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. The word, advert word here is the word katu, and it means downwards or below. It is also translated in the King James Version as bottom or down under. When Jesus said, I am from above, he was standing right here on this planet that is called earth. You can even look at that in John 3.13. And it says, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. You know, sometimes I enjoy reading the Message Bible and this verse that I want to read to you in John 8 verse 23 and 24 is so powerful in the Message Bible. So allow me to read this to you. It says, Jesus said, you tie down to the mundane and I am in touch with what is beyond your horizons. You live in terms of what you see and touch. I'm living on other terms. I told you that we were missing God in all this. You are at a dead end. 
if you won't believe I am who I say I am, you are at the dead end of sins. You're missing God in your lives. Isn't that awesome? Also, if we look at Romans 7 verse 6, it says, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. We can also compare this portion of scripture to Romans 6 verse 4. And Romans 6 verse 4 says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. You see, we need to understand and we need to grasp that the death of Christ on the cross was also our death. As new creatures, we have now arisen to walk with Him in newness, in the renewal of life, and serve Him in the newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter and of the mundane and of the earthly. That is why we can live this ascended life, being with Jesus seated in heavenly places. We can live the spirit life and not life from the earthly nature or of the old Adam that is within us. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 tells us clearly, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. John 3 verse 6 tells us, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. It is my prayer this morning that you will grasp this, that you will understand that you have been born again, that you are a spirit being, that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hebrews 12 verse 9 tells us, For the, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of our spirits and live? I want you to understand that as believers, we are essentially spirit beings and not human. I am not a human being trying to have a spiritual experience. I am a spirit being with a human experience of which God Almighty is our Father. I want you to understand that we are eagle saints. We have never fit and never will within this dimension that we call earth. If we truly embrace our identity as heavenly men. Like God, we are spirit. We have a soul and we give expression in the earth through a body. We live in the spirit far above the earth and this is what the ascended life is all about. In Colossians 3 verse 1 to 3 it says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You see, we need to understand that as Christ was raised up on the third day, we also have been raised up in the third day. In Matthew 16 verse 21, it tells us, from that time forth, Jesus began to shew unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Acts 10 verse 40 tells us, And him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 and 4 tells us, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Let's 
also look at the Old Testament. Hosea 6 verse 1 to 3, it says, Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Second Peter 3 verse 8 tells us, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. I want to say to you this morning, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, that we are privileged to live in this zone, to live in the dawning of a new day, because this new day is the third day from Jesus, and it is the seventh day from Adam. In Jude 1, verse 14, it says, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh the ten thousands of his saints. You see, if you look at Hosea 6 verse 1, it heralds this ascended life. In 6 verse 1 of Hosea, it says, Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. The word for return here in Hosea 6 verse 1 is sure, and it means to turn back again, to bring back, to restore, to refresh, or to repair. These are tremendous days of restoration. The Lord promised us in Joel 2 verse 24, 5, where he says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. You see, if we go back and we look at the year 1570, the days of Martin Luther, we see that from the days of Martin Luther until this present day, the Lord has been restoring to his true church the years that man-made religious traditions has consumed. And after two days, after 2,000 years, we have this promise that he tells us he will revive us. He is re quickening us. He is restoring us to life and to health. Because in and during the third day, he has determined that he will raise us up. He has raised us up from sleep and empowered us to stand up again. We are to stand in His might and the power in this day. See, today and now, being seated with Christ in heavenly places, we live in His sight, literally in His face and in His presence. We are living in the ascended place. We are being raised up to follow on, to run after the Lord in the most holy place where we met him as our savior in the outer court, we are now seated with him in the secret place. In Acts 4 verse 12, it tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. We experience him as the baptizing in the Holy Spirit, as we entered into the holy place. In Matthew 3 verse 11, he tells us, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, if we read and we study Acts 2, verse 1 to 4, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now we meet with him yet a third time as Lord 
as he raises us up in the Feast of Tabernacles on the third day. Deuteronomy 16 verse 16 tells us clearly, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall to choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. I want you to understand this morning that the ascended life is the Christ life. We are being enabled by the virtue of the indwelling Christ to ascend into the heights of Zion because it is from Zion as believers, sons of God, that we can now rule and reign with Christ. Colossians 1 verse 27 tells us, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I want you to know that the ascended life is the high calling. The ascended life is the Christ life. Christ is from above. Adam is from beneath. God is raising us up in this third day. Our mandate then is to live from the Spirit. We bring God's plan and purposes from the heavenlies and we implement it in this earthly dimension. I want you to know that we, you and I as believers today, we are now the ascending offering. There is a high calling the heavenly calling is the ascended life and the ascended life is the Christ life. Acts 17 verse 28 and we know the scripture it says clearly for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring. You see we need to come to that place where we can declare like the declaration in Philippians 1 verse 21, it says, For to me, for me to live, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Colossians 3, verse 3 to 4, For you are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. There are basically two major pictures of this ascended life that we find in the Old Testament. We read about the burnt offering. It's also known or called the ascending offering. And then there's the Psalms of Ascent, and you can study that in the book of Psalms 120 up until 134. Time does not allow me to go into depth with all of this. You see, when you study that, you will find that this chapter reveals the person of the Ascended One and the most important offering of all, which is the Ascending Offering. And it is the burnt offering that is the ascending offering. You see, the burnt offering or the ascending offering is an amazing revelation of his high calling. Allow me to read to you Exodus 29 verse 38 up until verse 46. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lamps of the first year day by day continually. The one lamp thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamp thou shalt offer at even. And with the one lamp a tenth deal of flour mingled with a fourth part of an hin of beaten oil, and the fourth part of an hin of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamp thou shalt offer at even, and thou and shalt do there to according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof for a sweet saviour, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, 
before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak there unto you. And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation at the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell amongst the children of Israel, and I will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God that bring, brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell amongst them. I am the Lord their God. Time doesn't allow me, but please go and study also Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1 to 17, and also Leviticus 6, verse 8 to 13. So, if you look at these scriptures, and you look at the Hebrew word for the word ascend, it is the word our law, and it means to ascend, it means to go up, to climb, to be high, to mount, to excel, to be superior to, to exalt, or to be taken up into. And the word here that is rendered as burnt offering is of the same family of O law. It means a step or stairs as you ascend stairs. It is like smoke going up. So from all of this, we get this very clear picture that the burnt offering is an ascending offering. Genesis 14, verse 18 to 22, it says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram, of the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he, Abram, give him tithe of all. This name, Ilion, which means highest or uppermost, is from the very same root. The word El Elyon means the Most High God. This was the God of Melchizedek, the mysterious one who we know prefigures Jesus as prophet, as priest, and as king. I also want to encourage you, and really I'm so sorry I don't have the time or the capacity to expand on this, but go and study Hebrews 5 to 8, from uh, chapter 5 verse 1 up until Hebrews 8 verse 6, and you will read more about this. You see, this if we have an understanding of this, it ties in directly that we have to have an understanding that as sons of God, we have been apprehended for the high calling in Christ because we are the royal priesthood. In 1 Peter 2 verse 9 it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of Him, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Having been made kings and priests unto our God, we shall reign on the earth. You see, if we can only grasp this, if we live our lives from this place of living the ascended life, living from our in Christ position, being seated with Christ in heavenly places, taking what God is declared in the heavenlies, and we bring it into the earthly home, into our environment. We rule and reign as king and priest, and through that, Christ reigns in the earth. Revelations 1 verse 6 tells us, and has made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Again, Re Revelation 5 verse 10 tells us, And He's made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. I want you to understand something this morning, my dear brother and sister, that is, unless 
you live in the Christ, in Christ position, unless you live from that place, being focused in Christ, being seated with Christ in heavenly places, you will not reign and rule in the earth. You see, if we go and study what the scripture tells us, in Philippians 2 verse 7 to 9, he tells us, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted, exalted him and given him a name which is above every man. You see, if we understand this, we will also understand that the ascending offering is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ offering himself without spot or wrinkle to God in complete obedience and delight to do the will of the Father, even unto his own death. God desires from me and you as sons of God that we will live in the same way and in the same manner. That we will offer ourselves unto the Lord in practical righteousness as a complete delight to do the will of our Father even unto our own death. Psalm 40 verse 6 to 8 tells us, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, Mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yes, thy law is within my heart. May this become your and my prayer on a daily basis. Lord, it is my delight to do your will, O my God. Yes. Your law is within my heart. You see, this offering, this ascending offering, reveals the perfect obedience and consecration of the ascended one to God the Father. And then again we see the demand is there again for me and you to become that ascended offering as we live a life of practical righteousness unto God. You see, Jesus was the man whom God sought. In Ezekiel 22 verse 30 it says, And I sought for a man amongst them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. See, Jesus is the one who at last would fill would fully glorify God in all things. We see that if we move further and we go into the New Testament, we see in John 8 verse 28 to 29, it says, Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He, that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please Him. What a powerful testimony. May God grant us the grace as sons of God that we will live the same manner of life. In John 17 verse 4, Jesus said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. As we've seen, God got everything when they did the burnt offering. And when we look at the life of Jesus, He became and He was the burnt offering. In the same way as the burnt offering was burnt till nothing was left, in the same way, Jesus, as the offering, gave himself in all. How about you? 
how about me? The demand is there that you and I, as we live a focused life on Jesus, that we too would become that burnt offering. You see, those of us that are called to be partakers of His image and His likeness will also receive the benefits of this abundant and ascended life. You see, Jesus came to reveal grace and truth. And in the same way, you and I as believers have been called to reveal grace and truth to those around us. It is my prayer that as you meditate upon this word, that the Spirit of God will speak to your heart, that you will grasp what I shared with you this morning by the Spirit and not by your intellect, that you will come to a place of understanding that as a Son of God, as one that's seated with Christ in heavenly places, who lives his life or her life from the in Christ position, you have the responsibility to capture what God is releasing in the heavenlies and bring it into the earthly home in which you live and in which you function. You become the manifestation, the presentation of the Lord Jesus Christ in your environment, in your family life, in your work environment, and wherever you place your feet. May God grant us the grace to be truly representatives of Him in this realm that we call earth. May God grant you the ability to live this focused life of being seated with Him in heavenly places. God bless you as you meditate upon this word and as we depart from here, it is my prayer that you will be blessed, that God will bless you, that He will place His hand of protection upon you, that He will keep you safe, and that we will meet again. We'll see each other again next week. God bless.